Good afternoon and welcome to today's webcast. I'm delighted to be joined in our studios today by Mr. Claudio Fernandez Aroth. Uh, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Thanks very much to you, Paul. Mr. Fernandez Aroth is the author of a brand new book called Great People Decisions, and today and next week we're going to be looking in some detail at how you can make great people decisions. What are the tips and the secrets for this very important aspect of management? Claudio Fernandez Aroth is a partner and member of the Global Executive Committee in the leading executive search firm Egon Zender International, where he has spent over 20 years filling executive positions for companies around the world. He holds an MBA from Stanford, previously worked for McKinsey and Company, and his best-selling articles have been published in leading business publications, including the Harvard Business Review and the MIT Sloan Management Review. So again, thank you for being with us today. You have been working around great people decisions for the last 20 years or so. Why do you feel this is so crucially important? Well, I think that making great people decisions is crucially important for three reasons. First, because making great people decisions, which means great appointments, mm -hmm. whether you promote from within or hire from outside, making great people decisions is the most important factor for our own career success in mm. the first place. Second, increasingly research is showing that making great appointments is the most important controllable factor for organizational value. And finally, as we know, if the right leaders are in the right places, that's the way to build a much better world. Okay. So those are the three reasons. Those are, I mean, those are pretty big statements. So for people might be watching today and saying, yeah, we understand getting the right person in the right place is important, but that's a pretty big claim that you're making. Well, let me explain you why, first of all, I think that making great people decisions is the most important factor for career success. Mm -hmm. Basically, we are born and we spend maybe 25 years full-time studying. Mm -hmm. We continue our life and our career, we become professionals. Then, after we become professionals, some people become managers. They start doing more important things through others, with more important resources, mm -hmm. with larger economic and social impact. And some people continue their career the whole way, becoming senior executives and making it all the way to the top as CEOs, board members, company chairmen. During these 22 years of experience, interviewing thousands of executives, I've been thinking hard, what is it that makes that some people are very successful in their careers mm -hmm. while others fail or never take off? Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced that one factor is, of course, luck, okay. but luck is not a controllable factor. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced that there are four factors that really make for career success. The, most, the first factor is genetics, of course. If you are strong, if you are intelligent, you have an advantage in life. But we know that our genes are less than half of what we are. And more than half of what we are is what we actually do with our genes. And that's why I think that the second most important factor is development. Mm -hmm. All the learning, formal and informal, that we achieve through life. Now, mm -hmm. once we graduate, once we finish our formal studies, then I think that the third factor for career success is making great career decisions. Mm -hmm. Working for great organizations where we learn, where we are constantly challenged by those assignments that perfectly match our skill level and we keep on learning throughout our whole life. We learn from projects, we learn from people, we learn from places, we learn from situations. Now, mm -hmm. once we become a manager, nothing is more important for our career success than making great people decisions. Especially important once you become a manager, mm -hmm. because everything you do will depend on the people you've chosen. Your results, your performance, mm -hmm. your risks, your chances of being promoted because of the successes you will have developed. So, the reason why I'm convinced that making great people decisions is the most important factor for career success is because it is the most important condition once you become a manager. Okay. So, they, so obviously having a big impact in terms of personal career, but in your, in your book and in the research that you've done as well, you say that it has a huge impact on company value as well. It does. Well, a couple of years ago there was a wonderful Harvard Business Review article about a highly effective organization. It was written by Julia Kirby, who is one of the most senior editors in Harvard Business Review. Mm -hmm. And she said that it is 
very difficult to determine what are the factors that make for a highly effective organization because again, like in our careers, luck plays a big role and mm -hmm. it's very hard to isolate the factors. And she highlighted two pieces. One was the work by Jim Collins and another was the work by a series of professors at Harvard and both really indicate why making great people decisions is so important for company value. What Jim Collins basically found was that the two foundational conditions for a company mm -hmm. to move from good to great, to achieve lasting greatness, were to have a great leader at the top and to make great people decisions. The way Jim Collins would put it would be to have the wrong people off the bus, mm -hmm. the right people on the bus mm -hmm. and the people in the right seats. Now, a series of professors from Harvard went one step further and tried to isolate what were the measurable factors that had a measurable impact mm -hmm. in organizational value and they found that there were four such factors. Okay. One factor which is close to the luck effect in our careers is the ear effect. Mm -hmm. If you are in 1930 it's very hard to be profitable to make money. This year is going to be a tough year mm -hmm. for most sectors. Next year is probably going to be a very tough year. Mm -hmm. If you were as I was in Argentina in 2002, I can tell you it was a very tough year. We had, for example, five presidents in 12 days. I mean, very unstable political and economic situation. So some years are very difficult. That's the first factor having yeah. impact on company value. Now, the problem with this factor is that it's not a controllable factor. You cannot travel in time. You cannot move from Argentina 2002 to China 2007. Same thing with the second factor, which is the industry effect. At a given point in time, some sectors are much more profitable than others. If you are today in the U.S. in the subprime mortgage business, it's very tough. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, what these Harvard professors found was that by far the most important controllable factor that has a measurable impact in company value is the leader effect. The choice of the CEO was the most important controllable factor on company value and basically what they found was that in some markets the choice of the CEO could explain up to 40% of the variance in company value. That's a huge amount. It's not 40% of the value of a typical company, it's 40% of the spread mm -hmm. between the most profitable and the least profitable companies in the sector. How much is this worth? Well, for a large US company it represents between 1 billion and 10 billion dollars mm -hmm. of value. That's the value of making great people decisions. Okay, and you mentioned just before we came on air today, we talked a little bit about Obama and when he selected his uh, team and the impact that that decision had on the stock market. Maybe you could... Absolutely. Well, uh, on, a, on Friday, November 21st, mm -hmm. in the afternoon, the rumor spread about who was going to be the new Secretary of Treasury in the United States. The moment that happened, based on the fact that it seems to be a great people decision, mm -hmm. the value of the stock market in the US increased between 5 and 6 percent. 5 and 6 percent increase in the stock market in the US represents 1 trillion dollars of value. Mm -hmm. That's the value of making great people decisions, which applies to organizations of all sorts, from a great country to a great company, of course. So there's a clear link between great people decisions and personal career se success, a clear link in terms of corporate value or company value. Absolutely. Presumably one of the drivers for you in writing this book was to help people get better at, at making Absolutely. people decisions. What have you found? You've worked with lots of different companies all across the world. What do you see as typically the blockages? What stops people from being successful in great people decisions? It's an excellent question, Paul, because making people decisions is very hard. I remember uh, that Jack Welch, for example, would say that making people decisions is very hard and making great people decisions is brutally hard. Mm -hmm. you know? If making people decisions were easy, there would be no divorces, there would be no lawyers, I would be without a job. It's very <laughs> difficult to make people decisions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we look at ourselves in the mirror and we surprise ourselves with shame because of some of the things we've done or we surprise ourselves at our capability, our courage, our initiative in some great things we do. So if it's hard to predict our own behavior, you can imagine how hard it is mm -hmm. to predict the behavior of others. Now, mm -hmm. why is it so hard to make great people decisions? Mm -hmm. The fundamental reason why it is so hard is because we have an old brain for a new job. Okay. Basically, our brain is a piece of hardware 
which didn't have any major upgrade for the last 10,000 to 100,000 years, which is quite a long period not to have an upgrade mm -hmm. in your heart. And so our brains are basically not different from the brain of the primitive hunter-gatherer who was collecting food and hunting animals in the savannah 10,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. That person basically needed to make one crucial decision all the time. Mm -hmm. The decision was, there's something moving over there? Is that thing going to eat me or can I eat that thing? Mm -hmm. And that was the decision. We are having this conversation today and the audience is watching us today because all of our ancestors, every single time, made the right decisions. Otherwise we would have ended or they would have ended in the belly of a tiger. Mm -hmm. So our brains are prepared to make very fast decisions. These decisions reside in a primitive part of the brain which is called the amygdala, mm -hmm. which is like a supercomputer which operates very fast and makes this fight or flight instinctive decisions mm -hmm. where when you're in front of a person unconsciously at lightning speed you make a decision pro or con that person. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is that the world has become much more complex. The amygdala is very fast but cannot process complexity. Mm -hmm. And so for making great people decisions you need to suspend these unconscious emotional reactions of whether you like or not the person mm -hmm. and do a careful homework about what is exactly needed for this position, what are the challenges, what are the priorities, what are the competences. Mm -hmm. Then you also need to be quite analytical about finding the best candidates wherever they are, inside or outside of the organization. And finally, you need to be very disciplined in assessing the person. So, just to give you some examples, when we are making a people decision, our brains get sabotaged by a series of unconscious psychological biases. And let me give you just a couple of examples, mm -hmm. and there's a full list that the viewers can watch. Mm -hmm. One is procrastination. There's lots of research that shows that unless someone is doing a terrible job, we are not very good at making people changes. Okay. We are risk averse, mm -hmm. particularly when things are going reasonably well. We don't factor in the opportunity cost of making a greater people decision. Mm -hmm. Research from McKinsey and others shows that, for example, 90% of executives believe that the organizations are not good at removing poor performers. Now, think about that statistic. Can you imagine, for example, a soccer team where 90% of the poor players would not be changed? Mm -hmm. So that's a typical bias. Another example, and just to give you one more, would be to make snap judgments. There used to be research that said that in a typical interview you would form what's called an uh, initial impression, mm -hmm. first impression of the candidate. So if you are interviewing a candidate like myself, in the first two, three, four minutes, you would come to a conclusion of whether the person is good or bad, and then the rest of the interview was not about assessing. It was about confirming your hypothesis, selling the job, mm -hmm. selling the organization, chatting, whatever. Now, neuroscience has shown that these first impressions happen much faster and they are much more powerful than we thought. They actually happen in a twentieth of a second. Okay. The snap of a finger. The amount of time that this noise stays in our ears, in our brain. Now, the problem with snap judgments is that they are very long on snap but very short on judgments. Okay. So we should make a special effort mm -hmm. to try to <coughs> really assess people in depth. And there are a series of other psychological drops. That's why making people decisions is so hard. We are not, we have an old brain for a new job. So if there are people watching today who say, well, you know, I've, I've interviewed hundreds of people, I've hired hundreds of people, my gut feeling, my gut reaction is very reliable, I know when someone walks in the door whether they're going to be right for the job, etc., etc., would you say, beware? Absolutely, mm -hmm. because in spite of what most people think, making great people decisions is not the result of an intuition, it's not an art, it's not the result of a gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Making great people decisions is not a capability that you could have and I would never have. Making great people decisions, that's the good news, is a craft and a discipline that can be learned and should be learned mm -hmm. for our career success, for the value of our organizations and for building a better world. Okay. We, we talked before, you just mentioned briefly about Obama. Clearly we're going into a recession now or we're, we're in a recession depending which country you happen to be in today. We're going through a difficult period, a credit crunch. Do you expect recruitment to be slowing down in the next year or so? Well, two answers to that. The first answer is what's happening 
if you look at the world with a longer perspective than just the next year or the next two years. Mm -hmm. And what's happening in the world is that there is a growing challenge because talent is becoming increasingly important. If you look, for example, at the value of a typical S&P 500 company in 1980, about 20% of its value was intangible assets. Mm -hmm. This has ballooned, and today about 70% of the value of a typical S&P 500 is intangible assets. Mm -hmm. So it's all about people. The greatest assets that company have are really people. Now, this is this shows that talent is becoming increasingly important, but at the same time, it is becoming increasingly scarce. Yeah. First, because of demographic reasons. We know about the aging of the baby boomers, particularly in developing countries. For example, yeah. in our firm, last year we did a global study on senior talent, and we found that the proportion of people in the 35 to 45-year-old bracket is going to decline by about 35% in only six years. Mm -hmm. And that's a very critical a big talent mm -hmm. base. Second, in addition to this, there is decreased loyalty, you know, and this generates the need for more hiring because people switch jobs more frequently. Then it's very hard to find some very relevant competencies. And then finally, there is the issue of globalization. The largest markets in the world, in the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, and particularly India and mm -hmm. China, they are the largest, they are the fastest growing, and there it is very hard to find the right uh, talent. So for all of these reasons, I expect hiring to continue to be very significant. That's the first part of the answer. But okay. the second part of the answer, Paul, is that I think that companies should con consider these times as times to have strict discipline to continue focusing on building lasting greatness. A few weeks ago, I was at Hewlett Packard, a great company, and uh, they were videotaping a webcast, a global webcast, uh, that I was giving on great people decisions. Before going there, I prepared myself by learning more about the background of that company. One of the things I did was reading a wonderful book by Dave Packard, which is called The HP Way. Mm -hmm. And it was fascinating because uh, Dave Packard, like uh, Bill Hewlett, they both studied at Stanford, and they created this wonderful company they founded. Dave Packard, before starting this company and after graduation, worked for some years at General Electric, which we know is a factory of talent and has been. And it was fascinating to read how throughout the Great Depression, a, a General Electric GE continued hiring brilliant people. Mm -hmm. So if you want to focus yourself on, last, of, on building lasting greatness, these are great times to continue hiring brilliant people. And in some cases, people who, because of the crisis, can become available and otherwise won't. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity to continue focusing on building lasting greatness through smart investments in talent. Okay. Claudia, you've done a, a great job of, of setting the scene and, and showing us just how crucial, how, how vital this is. Let's get down to practical details now. How can I make great people decisions? Well, I would like to focus today on four key points at the aggregate strategic level mm -hmm. and then next time we can discuss in more detail how to master great people decisions with some more practical implementation recommendations. Okay. But let's start with the strategic view which is the most important. Mm -hmm. So what to do? The first thing that one needs to do is to educate ourselves and others for making great people decisions because it is in a sense a blind spot that we don't learn how to do this when it is so crucial for career success and organizational value. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, as I said, we have an old brain for a new job. We also have an old education system for a new economy. Mm -hmm. We spent years studying finance and accounting and marketing and strategy, and we spent no time usually learning how to make people decisions. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to educate <coughs> yourself. The good news is that there is a body of research that can allow us to make great people decisions, which, as I said, is not an art. It's okay. a craft and a discipline that can be learned and should be learned. The second thing that we should do is adopt a new mindset. What do I mean by this? I mean using the same level of rigor, of analysis, of science, of professionalism that we would use, for example, in financial decisions. Nobody would pretend to be as good an investor as, say, Warren Buffett without studying finance for years mm -hmm. and building the discipline. Yet people make people decisions just bringing a friend, 
-hmm. making a superficial impression on a snap judgment or bringing people similar to themselves. Let me illustrate what I mean by adopting a new mindset with an example of what it's being done these days in Asia okay. by one company and by the <coughs> way I expect Asia to be sort of the hotbed of innovation for people decisions because necessity is the mother of all inventions and when there is so much demand and such a thin mm -hmm. pool of talent then people become very creative mm -hmm. in generating candidates, assessing candidates, attracting candidates, developing candidates, retaining candidates. Mm -hmm. One of the largest uh, economic groups in India is the Tata Group of mm -hmm. companies. They have an information systems division which is called TCS, Tata Consulting Services. Mm -hmm. Let me explain as an example of a change of mindset what they have been doing already for some years. Each year TCS hires thousands of people straight out of college. This is what they have been doing. First, for each person they hire, they calculate the rate of return of each hire. They factor in the productivity of each person, the salary, the cost of attracting and training the person. Mm -hmm. Step two, they calculate for each of the thousands the average rate of return of each hire for <coughs> each of the universities from which they hire. <laughs> Step three, they go to those universities with the highest average rate of return of the hires and they make a blanket offer to the whole graduating class without even bothering to assess each one of them. Step four, they work together with those universities that have the highest average rate of return of the hires so as to develop two courses for the last semester so that they hire the highest average rate of return hires pre-trained for the future job. Okay. This is what I mean by adopting a new mindset, realizing mm -hmm. that you should use the same level of rigor and professionalism in making people decisions as you would use it in financial decisions, in marketing decisions, mm -hmm. and so on. When you spend so much time, for example, a consumer good company calculating the profitability of different types of shampoos or soap through the different channels, what you do for shampoo and soap, wouldn't you do it for people, which is the most important asset. Mm -hmm. Third recommendation, for taking advantage of the potential value of making great people decisions would be to cut the red tape. And what do I mean by this? It used to be a practice in many companies that, for example, in a hiring process, say 10 people would interview a candidate. Some of those people may not be good at assessing people and you can run the risk. There are two risks in hiring. One is hiring the wrong person, but the second risk is killing the, wrong ca the right candidate okay. for the wrong reason, <coughs> is rejecting that exceptional star which mm -hmm. is in short supply. Yep. So the best practice recommendation is to have just three or four high caliber people involved in the process. In that way you will reduce the chances of hiring the wrong one, but you will also reduce the chances of rejecting the exceptional talent which in a world in which talent is scarce also has a very high opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. And the fourth and final recommendation at this level is to implement the best practices. As I said, luckily over the last two or three decades, outstanding research has been made and there is a proven process to increase the chances of making great people decisions with six steps. First, defining when a people change is needed. Second, deciding what to look for in a candidate. Third, deciding where and how to look for candidates, both inside and outside of your own organization. Fifth, uh, fourth, I mean, is deciding how to assess those mm -hmm. candidates. Fifth, once you've found those best candidates that you have assessed, you still need to attract, motivate, and retain them. And sixth, you can also work on planning and supporting the integration of the candidate so that this is soft landing rather than a crash landing. Okay. So what you're suggesting is a very rigorous, structured process to a yes. certain extent that individuals and companies can go through to really enhance the impact they have in terms of people decisions. Absolutely. Uh, and I know that next week you're going to come back and, and we're going to look into that in a little bit more detail. We're going to really get our hands and our sleeves rolled up and, and get into the, the practical aspects of that. What can people expect from next week's webcast? Yes. Next week I would like to share with the audience, Paul, in the our next conversation, three key practical takeaways that I am convinced that if we remember them and if we use them with discipline and consistently, 
we will significantly enhance the chances of making great people decisions. Mm -hmm. The three key takeaways I want to share with the audience will be responding to three critical questions. One, what to look for in a candidate. Two, where to look for candidates, inside or out. Third, how to assess people. This is what I would like to share with the audience next time. Claudio, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Paul. I, I really, really appreciate this. that. I hope you've enjoyed that today. I hope that Claudio has managed to whet your appetite. And if you're interested in finding out, as Claudio has just mentioned, what to look for in people, where to find those people, and how to assess those people, then please make sure you don't miss our webcast next week. Where we'll be looking at that in some detail. From all of us here on the Corporate Learning Network, thank you for joining us today, and we'll look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Bye-bye.